A very common question that's often asked of me is, should I take a contract position? So these are clients that have been displaced either by a reduction in workforce or a reorganization, maybe even a termination. And there's some fear behind that question. I can always hear the fear behind that question. Usually it's coming around four to eight weeks uh, into unemployment and they're getting a little bit worried. And so the thought of you know, taking a contract position is on their mind. If you're new to the channel, my name is Bill Benoist. I'm a certified professional career coach here in Silicon Valley. And in today's video, I want to talk about some pros and cons of taking a contract position. Five pros, five cons, and I'm hoping that I can touch on a couple of these that you've not even considered when you're weighing your options out there. So first off, let me begin by saying that contract positions are available in just about virtually every industry out there. You know, LinkedIn, they have about 60 million companies in their database, but of those 60 million companies, all of those companies fall into only one of about 154 industries. So 60 million companies all funneling down into about 154 industries and just about every one of those industries will hire contract workers out there. In fact, another study that I recently read, 64% of individuals have actually selected contract work to fill in you know, the, the gaps on their resume. And if you're wondering, is this contract work going to be just part-time? 73% of contractors are working full-time. And that is, you know, put that into the same equation as full-time permanent employees, which is 74%. So 74% of permanent employees are full-time, 73% of contract workers are full-time. So you can kind of take that off the table right off the bat. But let's talk about the pros of taking some contract work out there. So first and foremost, contractors are usually going to see a higher salary. So, you know, they're, they're hired for a specific skill set. And this company, they're not going to be investing in training. They want to get those experts out there. So they're going to pay a little bit more for them. And plus, they're not going to have to be paying some of the uh, benefits that their permanent employees are getting. So it's, you know, it, it, it could be costing them a little bit less unless they're going through a staffing agency, which many of them do. But even the staffing agency there may be paying the salary directly to the uh, contractor and not the company. But in all these cases, it's pretty much the given that contract workers are gonna make a little bit more money out there. So number one is the salary. Another pro, another uh, positive reason for working for contract that maybe you haven't thought about is the lifestyle flexibility. So there was a study that was done by Workforce 360 where I think they, they surveyed some, it was over a thousand individuals, thousand contractors out there, and 86% of them reported that their job satisfaction was either good or excellent. So a lot of these individuals are very happy out there. And I can even attest to that because there's been a couple of uh, individuals where I have worked and their, their, in almost their entire career has been working as a contractor and they finally decided to go back into the workforce as a full-time employee, but they did enjoy working contract. I want you to keep that in mind as well, is that 86% of those polled reported a job satisfaction of either good or excellent. Another positive benefit of being a contractor, another pro of this is that you are going to have more opportunity working in different industries. So remember, you're an expert, whether it's in technology or it could be a product management, could be management, whatever, but you've opened yourself up to different industries out there. You know, if you're a permanent employee, a lot of times uh, permanent employees are being hired by companies that have worked in the same or very similar industries, but contractors, they have a little bit more uh, latitude out there. So this could look really good on your resume as well as really increasing your skill set. So number three is really expanding your skill set, expanding your resume out there. 
Number four, showing that you're working still, if you're worried about these major gaps in your resume. But I want to take just a moment and comment about this. And that is, you know, in today's time, it's not unusual for someone to be unemployed for six months or even a year. So it is very common that you you know, for, for hiring managers and recruiters to see individuals out there with a little bit longer gaps in their work history. And then the fifth, the final pro that I would say in this is that there's some good tax benefits as well. You know, I, um, I left corporate America in 2015 and I've worked a couple of contract positions and I'm not talking about my sole entrepreneur. I'm talking about contract positions with, you know, some career transition companies and such. And I've been able to write off a lot of different expenses, mileage expenses, phone expenses, number of other things. So as a contractor, in many cases, you got some tax benefits there that you don't have as a permanent employee. So going back through this again, number one is the salary. Number two is the work style flexibility, the job satisfaction. Number three is that it's going to expose you to new industries. It will help with your skills. Number four, being able to, you know, fill some of those stop gaps on your resume. And number five are the tax benefits. So now let's talk about the cons for a moment. The big one, and I'm sure this is probably front and center on your mind, is the uncertainty. There's uncertainty into whether or not that that contract can end at any given moment or it goes all the way to the end. Let's say it's a four or five month contract and you get to the fourth or fifth month and then you're back out on the workforce and you're looking for that next contract. So that's the first con right there. Number two is what I would say career advancement. Although you're getting to develop your skills a lot quicker and maybe in some different industries. You know, promotions don't usually come to contractors. They come to, you know, permanent employees. However, as you gain those skills in new industries, that next contract and the next one and the next one after that could be a little bit higher level for you. In fact, that's actually how I began my career in technology. It, it, I came from the banking industry. And one of the things that I did right off the bat was I started working contract and I worked maybe, I want to say four or five, possibly six companies during those two years as a contractor. In each one of those positions in technology, I made it to the next level and to the next level and so forth until I finally then stepped out of the contract world and took a full-time position and I went into management very quickly with that. So. There is the concern that, you know, the career advancement may not be there, but you are in charge of your own employability. The third, and this is something that as a employee and as a manager um, in corporate America that I, th that I saw when we had contractors is they're often the outsiders looking in. So they don't have the opportunities really to participate in a lot of what I would say the fun functions of the company or the training functions. So, you know, for example, we would have a three day team building, the entire department would shut down and we would go meet someplace for three days and we would have team building exercises, but the contractors did not get to come with us. Um, Christmas holiday parties, a lot of times contractors may not be, you know, invited to that. They're, they're usually the party that is kind of left on the outside looking in. And if you're, you know, you're a people person, you really enjoy uh, working with people and, and, you know, those close connections, that could be very difficult for you. So I want you to consider that um, if you're thinking about taking a contract position, is you could be the person that is on the outside looking in. So that's the third con. What's the fourth? holiday time, sick leave, paid holidays. These are not days that you're going to be paid for. Taking a vacation, you're not going to be paid for this. So you need to start planning. You know, most of the companies now will offer some kind of health benefits, not all. You have to kind of, you know, check that. 
that is something that will probably be available, but you're not going to be paid, you know, for the time off. Like I say, the holidays and sick time and vacations and such. So you need to budget accordingly for that. So that's the fourth item. And number five is there's no retirement planning. There's no 401k. There's no matching 401k. Now you can still do an IRA of course and you know some other retirement but there's not that matching amount that a lot of companies uh, will pay employees that opt into a 401k. So you're gonna have to you know not only be able to what I would say plan accordingly for any vacations you want to take or time off or sick time or something like that but also for your retirement if this is something that you're looking at full time. Now what if you are not looking at something where it's going to be a full-time contract position but maybe you want to get back into the workforce and you're wondering if a contract position will lead to a permanent position. So I tried to do some research on this and first off, I, what, what I found by just one item here, and this was in 2015, and what this, this article pointed out was that said that about 75% of temporary to permanent positions, those employees went over into a permanent position. Now, a little bit from my own personal background as a hiring manager, I often hired temp to perm positions. And the reason I did this was because I mean, usually we would have a fiscal year, we'd have to plan for the fiscal year, maybe you know three months prior to the beginning of the fiscal year. And I might not have seen a need for, let's say, two employees. Maybe I only saw a need for one. And so the fiscal year would come and I would go ahead and hire that one employee. And then maybe about four months later, I would need to hire another employee. But because I didn't have it in the budget, I wasn't able to hire it. But I was able to get a temp to perm employee. I was able to hire contractors. Remember what I said in the very beginning is that a lot of times, you know, this is cheaper for a company to hire a contract employee. But in every single case, without exception, every single one, I brought that temporary employee on full time at the next fiscal year. So that's my own experience there, but that sounds pretty much in line with that one article I read, and that was 75% of temp employees go to perm in those positions that are offered as temp to perm positions. So not every position out there is offered to temp to perm. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be that opportunity there. I'm just talking about it's not up front. So there's still an opportunity that you could also become a permanent employee by starting out as a temp if that's something that you're looking at. So I hope that, you know, talking about these five pros, these five cons, help you a little bit more in making the decision as to whether or not you should be working a contract position. I hope you found this video informative and useful, and if you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification, as I do upload new career tips and strategies every Tuesday, and I'd hate for you to miss anything. Thanks for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Thank you.